it's now day 83 of cab isolation lockdown learning um, in this field of spring wheat this is the one that was really suffering from the drought and it had the little white stripes in it from um, the chemical left over from the spuds the year before it's now looking great the geese seem to be leaving most of it alone I'm just putting a bit of herbicide on because there's a few um, what we call broad leaf weeds in it which will make it difficult for combining and different things um, it's, it's totally in flower the uh, the um, heads are completely out some of the bottom leaves have, have, have been dying off um, probably earlier than normal but that's probably because of the drought stress that it was suffering but we're going to have to put a fungicide on it to protect it because we've got like this damp muggy weather at the moment which could uh, could mean, mean disease it'd go right through it and you get what we call microtoxins in the grain which make it sort of dangerous to eat really it makes it unhealthy um, if you get grass weeds and different things as well in, in it and you don't keep it clean you get what you call ergot and ergot's been um, been linked to the f it makes you hallucinate and different things like that and they reckon in the middle ages when the people used to think were witches or or different things like that it was because of the ergot that they were eating and the bread was making them a bit a bit doolally and they were seeing things that weren't really there so um, nowadays we have obviously healthy wheat because we have the, the right chemicals and different things to protect them so like I say just like mould on, on um, that could grow on on your food if you leave it in the fridge or out the fridge too long we have to protect the things in the field because they, you know they're growing in the natural environment and um, there's there's obviously risk with doing that so in order to have a sustainable um, food production in the UK or anywhere really we you know we use different technologies to keep it healthy for us um, a lot of people say we shouldn't use chemicals we should use organic and and this that and the other well, well the problem with organic is it, it can't match the yields of um, what we call conventional agriculture and there's, there's an unhealthy amount of people alive today on earth due to modern science so we need science to feed them otherwise there simply won't be enough food to go around if we all went organic it, it I think it's a bit of a selfish choice to buy organic because you're basically paying a premium for someone to farm less productively in order to you to think oh well I, I, you know there's no chemicals been treated on my um, on my food well everything's a chemical you know water's h2o it's just using it in the right way and at the right time to make the food healthy and um, nutritious and if, if you want to buy organic food that's great but all you've done is make, paid a farmer a premium to grow not as productively which i think is wrong in in some ways when there's people in the world still starving and, and still haven't got food but anyway that's me off my soapbox so back on the bateman and off we go just in the field now, field of spring wheat again. This is kind of where it all started, this whole cab isolation lockdown learning. It was uh, 12 weeks tomorrow since we were drilling this field into um, baked soil that was um, like soup two days beforehand. And that's how fast the weather changed. We've now got a, a lovely looking crop of spring wheat. It's a little bit stunted. The heads are a bit short on it because it's been starved of water for so long, but it's got some moisture now. so. That's why we're in it with the sprayer now, protecting it to get it through to harvest. Uh, there's a few wild oats, if you can see them, but they're not really that detrimental to yield and they're not worth the cost of taking out. So um, it's just incredible, really, how different the field looks in 12 weeks. I might put a video on the end of this of, of how it looked when we started. So, you know, that's obviously 12 weeks ago. And you'll see the difference. This is the uh, patch of spring wheat that we patched up because the, the drill had run out you can see the difference in height i mean it's you know it, it's massive uh, it's obviously because it was so dry it just couldn't get going and um it's got some moisture now but it's massively behind it probably won't make any any grain for by the time we harvest the field this is a bell patch where the rabbits are, the hares are eating it where the bbc had the time lapse camera that um that's gone away because they found that the um when they closed the case when they set it up they snapped the wire so basically it was here for, for about a month or so without even working so uh, that's a shame really but maybe they might get some some footage in the autumn of a crop growing uh, it's also the field as well where i patched up the drain that had, um, was bubbling up that's nice and dry now over there and this is the, the channel that we put in for the for it so that's again it's nice and dry so it's all sorted now so there's just a little hump we'll have to remember when we combine it not to scoop up any soil with the combine bit of action we thought the chipper had gone on fire the uh, fire suppression system had gone off and covered everything with powder 
Turns out it's not been on fire, there's obviously been a fault. So, I'm gonna get it reset and recharged. Stinks. Well, at least it's not burnt anything. The yard's getting full with chips, so they'll have to do a bit of stockpiling. The Merlot's lifted up to 10 metres. Uh, getting as high as we can, because uh, the guys are living stuff like that, and uh, storage is free in the air. So while wanting to cross the railway line, this has just happened. So it's seven o'clock at night. I'm sat at a level crossing. They call it Lee Green Network Rail. There's a phone down there. Now, when they first installed these phones about, I don't know, five or six years ago, they never used to be phones. You used to look both ways, but they wanted to make the trains faster. So they electrified the line and put all this electrification in. And they put the phones in because they said it was no longer safe for us to look both ways. And what we had to do is we had to ring up. So the guy that installed the phone says, when you ring up, always check that they know where you're calling from. And they've took their head out of the paper and they know that, they, they've, that you're ringing from the right place. So what you do is you pick up the phone, you say, you say hello, they answer, say the, 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 the signal box, and you say, hi, can you confirm which cross I'm at? Now that means they've physically got to look up out of their paper or the Facebook or whatever they're doing to see where you are because you're risking your life they're not they're sat in an office so they, they pick up they lock up where you are they go yeah you're at Lee Green Crossing then I confirm them at Lee Green Crossing and then I ask if it's safe to cross if it's safe to cross they let me cross if it's not safe to cross they tell me to wait and I wait I don't know why because the farmland was here well before the railway despite it being the site of the Rain Hill Trials the oldest passenger railway in the world Anyway, it's, it's nearly seven o'clock now. I want my tea. I want to get finished spraying before it gets any windier or starts to rain. And the guy that picked up the phone won't tell me what crossing I'm calling from and wants me to tell him where I'm calling from first. Now, he's not risking his life crossing that line, getting hit by a train. I am. About three years ago, despite all these checks and them confirming where I'm at, they still got it wrong and told me to cross when two trains came. Luckily, I heard the phone ringing and I didn't cross. But that week before, a tractor did get struck by a train. They do get things wrong. It's my life I'm risking. It should have electric gates, because now I have to cross the tracks, open the gates, cross back, get my vehicle, cross with my vehicle, cross back to shut the gates and cross back to where I am. Five crossings. People have electric gates out of laziness. If I had electric gates to the side, I'd only have to cross once. Now I know it's a massive ramp, but Network Rail, sort your staff out in your signal box because they're making things unsafe and they're being very difficult. Just finishing off now, it's spitting me rain. This fungi side could be now wasted because Network Rail kept me waiting for so long. They uh, also hung up the phone on me another two, three, three times in total. They, they called me something that I won't repeat on here because children watch, but I thought it was terrible. Luckily all the conversations have been recorded. So hopefully I can do a little mini series about, about how terrible network rail is. But what the real worry worry is, the fact that when I um, when I rung up one of the boss's numbers I had in my phone, he told me that um, that he doesn't no longer work this area and uh, to ring to, to Google the phone number for network rail and delete his number out of my phone, which I did. I Googled the emergency number for network rail and five minutes I was on hold for and I didn't speak to anyone, it was just an automated thing five minutes until my phone battery went flat. I charged my phone up, rang back again, and I was on hold for another three minutes before then someone else rang me and I hung up. So if there's an emergency on the railway or your car breaks down in the middle, if you ring network rail, they don't answer the phone because they've obviously not got enough staff. So it's very dangerous, the railways at the moment. So um, I think HSE should look into this. Anyway, that's enough of a rant for me today. I'm gonna to put a little picture on now at the end of, um, of what the field looked like that we sowed 12 weeks ago. So bye for now.